All right, what's up everyone? It's Uncle Sam Bonner here, and now it's time to showcase this guide on how to play Billy. I know I had a couple of old videos on how to curve with Billy and even five tips to become a better Billy player, but this video is going to compile all of these into one full guide. Now that Billy got some huge changes, it'll be a lot more different on how to play him, but it's also going to be easier now that the overheat system and his chainsaw collision got reworked. But to not waste any of your time, let's begin this guide. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about are the add-ons. I'll just categorize beginner add-ons, expert add-ons, and useless add-ons. The useless add-ons are the ones that you shouldn't use at all. The beginner add-ons are the ones that are pretty decent, but also don't require too much skill to master. And we got the expert add-ons that are very great, but may require a lot of skill with Billy to master. So for the useless add-ons, they are counterweight, cracked primer bulb, discarded air filter, thermal casing, high speed idler screw, and ragged engine. The beginner add-ons are dad's boots, steel toe boots, off-brand motor oil, grease throttle, spike boots, low kickback chains, Thompson's mix, clogged intake, and filthy slippers. The expert add-ons are tune carburetor, iridescent engravings, and low pro chains. The last add-on I forgot to include is Apex Muffler in here, but this add-on is a unique add-on that I suggest to use undetectable or stealth perks for it to be viable. The reason to this is because using this add-on makes the chainsaw sound silent for survivors that are not in the terror radius. Since Billy's terror radius is 32 meters and does not give any sort of stealth built into his kit, it gives survivors enough time to keep their distance from you the moment they hear the chainsaw sound and terror radius. If I had to categorize this one right, I'd put it between beginner and useless, but this all depends on your build. Next, I'll try to go through perks. With Billy and his current state, there are lots of good perks that you can use on him. The first perk I can recommend is Barbecue and Chili from Leatherface because after hooking a survivor, you can quickly chainsaw sprint to their aura from long range in just a little time. Other aura tracking perks that even fit well for Billy similar to Barbecue are Gearhead from Deathslinger, Scourge Hook Floods of Rage from Artist, and Nowhere to Hide from Night. Another great tracking perk you can use for Billy is Infectious Fright from Plague because if you down someone, then any other survivors in your terror radius will scream near you, which will grant you a nice snowball opportunity so that you can have a chance to defeat all of the survivors quickly. Lethal Pursuer from Nemesis is a great tracking perk to use on Billy, but can do so much if you use it with other aura perks since the perk itself increases the aura time by plus two seconds. For example, using Barbecue and Chili gives auras for five seconds, but adding Lethal Pursuer with it will give auras for 7 seconds instead. Also starting a game off with lethal pursuer means you can chainsaw sprint directly to an aura and get a quick down if you make it towards the survivor, which will already get you your first hook and pressure other survivors away from gens to go for saves. Enduring, which comes from Billy, is also nice so that you can rev your saw more often to break pallets and possibly utilize it for a quick hit in case you get stunned on the same side as the survivor, or as I like to call it, reversed. However, using Spirit of Fury from Spirit with Enduring as well can improve it heavily so that if these two activate together, you can guarantee a free hit as long as there's no extra pallet or window that connects with the one you use with End Fury. Bamboozle from Clown is an interesting perk that fits pretty well with Billy, but it comes with high risk and high reward. The risk is that by vaulting a window to block it, the survivor is going to leave the tile immediately and run into another safe structure, which could potentially cause a bad cycle if you vault too much with it. The reward on the other hand, some windows and setups in this game are incredibly strong that Bamboozle shortens the chase time and forces survivors to drop safe pallets earlier. However, I normally don't use this perk at all because I spend most of my time trying to mind game on windows and I rarely vault them myself. There's another vaulting perk that is fun to use which is known as Superior Anatomy coming from Wesker. This perk makes your vault speed faster when activated simply through a survivor fast vaulting in close range. The only downsides with it are that it has a 30 second cooldown after it's used and does require the fast fault once the cooldown timer is finished. All of the perks I suggested here are teachables from different killers, but I will also include two perks that aren't teachables which will be very helpful if you're new to the game and haven't purchased much chapters. One of the most underrated tracking perks in the game is Whispers. When you use this, it lights up on your screen to notify you that a survivor is within 32 meters of where you're standing and shuts down if they end up being further than that distance. Unlike most tracking perks, this isn't countered by Distortion, Calm Spirit, or even Shadow Step. The second perk that is nice for tracking is Bitter Murmur. This perk activates only when a generator is completed, but you can see the auras of survivors near a completed gen for a limited amount of time. When used with Billy, your chainsaw sprint gives you enough time to reach the survivor with Bitter Murmur activated to get you a down. 
Now here, I'm going to explain this feature Billy has, which is known as Overdrive. Overdrive is a mechanic that lasts for 20 seconds, but activates when the white meter on your chainsaw icon in the bottom left maxes out to 100%. Once you reach overdrive mode, your chainsaw charge time is 5% quicker, your chainsaw sprint speed is 13 meters per second, and it allows the chainsaw cooldown to be 10% quicker than normal timing. Basically during overdrive mode, you become a stronger belly player for 20 seconds. Once that timer passes, you lose all of those buffs until you regain overdrive again. The best way to gain overdrive regularly is by using your chainsaw more often and committing long chainsaw sprints. Be warned that if you're not using your saw for 15 15 seconds, the meter slowly dissipates. There's a simple trick to prevent this. As soon as it starts dissipating, tap your chainsaw button once and the dissipation meter will stop. If you're on an indoor map, you probably need to do this. It's best to use your saw more often so that you can utilize this mechanic for quick downs. If you're not chasing a survivor, do not instantly begin overdrive mode yet. Keep the left meter at least 99%, then as soon as you see a survivor and get in the chase, immediately start overdrive so you'll have a better time to end the chase quickly. This part is everyone's favorite, how to do the billy curve. Here's an important note, you don't need to increase your controller sensitivity anymore. Behavior has confirmed that they max his control sensitivity to 100% in the initial turn rate, so you can curve even if your sensitivity is incredibly as low as 0%. To do the billy curve, you gotta make sure your chainsaw meter is at least 80%, position yourself slightly near the edge of a corner, and keep your eyes on the charge bar and ground. When you're ready to do it, Hold the chainsaw button while moving forward so that you start sawing by the time you reach the corner. As soon as you're positioned near the corner and you hear the start of the billy roar, make a huge turn to the left or right to complete it. To practice it on your own time, I recommend doing it on these shack corners to understand the timing, and then use a shack door and try to see if you can curve directly towards the window for precision practice. This is a good place to practice on because a lot of times you'll have a survivor run instantly to the window like this while you're chasing them. To get the billy curve properly, as I said before, Feather your chainsaw with 80% and then while moving forward to reach the edge of a tile, hold the chainsaw button when you're ready to expect yourself to start sawing and make a quick turn once you hear the very beginning of Billy's roar. Numbers are getting the best of me. I might get this. If you can get this right, you'll be able to pull off the basics of hitting a Billy curve, but you also will see a BP scoring event that says curve, which rewards you for turning at least 90 degrees or more at the start of Billy's chainsaw sprint. But we're not done yet because there's another important thing to keep note of. How to curve with overdrive is almost the same thing, but there is one small difference. Keep in mind that once you have overdrive, your chainsaw rev time and sprint speed is quicker than usual, so using the billy roar to start turning won't be as efficient. When curving with overdrive, feather to at least 70% charge time, and while moving near the area you want to curve, keep your eyes on both the charge bar and the ground. When you see your charge bar maxed out or hitting 100% visually, then immediately make a huge turn to either the left or right. This technique is a lot better with overdrive because it makes it easier to keep your billy curves very precise. You could also do this trick without overdrive, but I don't recommend it because it may cause you to bump early and hit obstacles due to lack of speed. Here's some really good examples of me pulling off billy curves using this trick. Now like this spawn though is kind of sweet. That's what I'm supposed to do. Start literally right here. I did shelter woods because shelter wood doesn't have like a gen spawn 24-7 in shack. The belly curve window is exactly one second, so when you're trying to do a belly curve, that should be enough time for you to fix your mistakes if you're not curving directly where you want. You can even try to force overdrive early and start a bit far while you're curving, and then the moment you're about to reach the corner of where you want to curve, instantly turn left or right to go in the direction you want. But remember that the curve window is one second, so after that your turn rate decreases for longer chainsaw sprints. If you are trying to practice belly curving with overdrive, I'd highly recommend using clogged intake and off-brand motor oil since these two add-ons allow you to get overdrive quickly and slightly increases the length of the overdrive saw timer. Also one important thing, if you are using iridescent engravings, you can actually feather the saw to 90% since this charge time takes longer and start curving once the meter is filled up as your chainsaw sprint speed is incredibly faster than playing without it. But once you figure out all of these, you'll be completely ready to hit as many billy curves as possible. If you want to curve on keyboard, it's simple. All you gotta do is go to your settings in game, head to input binding, scroll all the way down to the binds for turn left and right, change the right to E, and change the left to Q. This will not affect your mouse at all, but it will allow you to make huge turns if you press or hold these keys. 
Now this quick thing I want to address, I'm going to show my hand cam for how to do it on mouse, keyboard, and controller, but you might realize they all share the same technique. On mouse, you just make a soft turn once you want to start curving. On controller, all you gotta do is push your R stick fully to the left or right. On keyboard, you can hold Q or E, but to go wide, you softly spam whichever key you want so that it doesn't lead to a big turn. Regardless of what you use, one of these don't have a bigger advantage against the other. It is definitely recommended you work with whichever you're accustomed to the most and learn how to use it right in the long run. Here, I'll explain some tips to help you play better with Billy. First and foremost, it's important that you learn how to feather with Billy's chainsaw. One of the biggest problems a lot of players face is that when they try to start sawing, the charge time becomes quick and you end up missing a saw hit opportunity. To prevent this, make sure when you're not on overdrive, learn to feather Billy's chainsaw by holding the meter at 80% and keeping a consistent tempo so that it doesn't hit 100% or go less than usual. But if you hit overdrive, feather your chainsaw so that the meter is at 70% or do a slower tempo to keep the meter in the same spot. I made the same tip with learning how to billy curve, but in general, learning the feather timing is crucial to keep up with consistency. Second, memorize the map collisions very well. When it comes to curving, there are spots that have no collision, medium collision, and high collision. If you've seen my old billy tips video in the past, I mentioned all three of these have different ways for you to interact with them, but now it's different. If a spot has no collision or medium Medium collision, it's highly recommended that you try hugging the tile because you will rarely bump due to the changes that allows Billy's chainsaw collision to not bump into everything. But if a spot has high collision, do not try to curve it and just play for a back rev to ease up your troubles. Although you can still curve a survivor on a high collision spot if you do it widely and have overdrive on, because these areas are very small and with overdrive, it'll help you catch up in no time. The third tip is you need to be aware of the way survivors play. You'll have survivors who will attempt to play very safe by dropping pallets when you're not revving your saw or just running very distant from you without looping. If you see these gamers, you can either use your chainsaw for mobility to get close to them so that they'll be forced to loop you or chase another survivor instead to prevent yourself from struggling against a survivor who is playing safe. And even if these survivors play safe, do not be scared to swing at them. If you force yourself to play chainsaw only against safe survivors, they will take advantage of this because these guys are trying to to play a normal game and want a challenge. If you get close to them and near a pallet or window, swinging is quicker than chainsawing. And here's the last tip, force overdrive more in chases. In general, you can curve a survivor with an average skill level regardless of what add-ons you're running. But if it's a very skilled survivor or someone who knows how to play against Billy, the best way you can down them is to use overdrive mostly in chases. The faster your chainsaw is, the lower the reaction time for a survivor to dodge. And if you use overdrive to play the chases, that resorts these survivors to limit their resources against you. Lastly, I'm going to address how to play Billy a lot more efficiently in your games through multiple situations and techniques. Sometimes when you're trying to back rev a survivor, they will do multiple tricks that will cause you to miss like run at you, crouch, and just turning away from your saw quickly. To prevent yourself from getting outplayed by this, keep feathering your saw for a while and stop moving for a bit so that you can aim as close as possible to the survivor. When you're ready to chainsaw directly on the survivor, hold your chainsaw button and make sure you do it with the survivor being in the middle of your screen. If you're trying to back rev a survivor, but they're somewhat close to you, be warned that they will try to do their best to keep their distance from you. That means the farther they are, the harder it will be to hit them. But you can hit them if you start your chainsaw sprint and turn in the direction they choose to dodge, which is either left, right, or no dodge at all. This is a lot more easier to pull off if you have engravings or if overdrive is activated as it lowers the reaction time for a survivor to make a dodge. A survivor can sometimes dodge your belly curve like this if you're trying to do it while hugging the tile that you are curving. There are two ways to outplay this. The first way is to go wide and turn directly into the tile. I have a small diagram of what it looks like along with this clip of me getting someone pulling this maneuver off. If you do this, the survivor will either get hit if they flare out of the tile or will get hit if they keep going to the end because you already closed in on them. The other way is to consistently feather with your saw while following them. Pulling this off allows you to zone them into you and grants an opportunity to hit them directly with your saw. If you're playing on an LNT wall, your first expectation is do not go chainsaw only for it, especially if you're just learning Billy. Why is that? Because if you do, you will spend the rest of the time trying to hit a Billy curb on one of these tiles and just get juked repeatedly. I usually suggest to play the LNT wall like a normal killer, going for a basic swing on the survivor. But there are two spots I recommend trying to curve, and it's the inside of the L wall that goes here, and the outside of the T wall that goes in here. If you're on a jungle gym, this one spot is a great place to do a billy curve. 
To do it, you might need to chase a survivor towards this side and start the ability curve past the pallet for a quick 90 degree turn. If you're close to the survivor or if you have overdrive, you will guarantee a hit from doing this trick. If you are standing parallel to a survivor on a tile similar to this long wall, you can fully curve them, but the distance between you and whether or not you have engravings or overdrive are the biggest factors with hitting it. If you make it to one end of the tile and you're somewhat close to that survivor, then you'll be able to hit them without the need for overdrive. But if they're further away than expected, do not curve it unless you have overdrive on, otherwise they'll already leave the tile before your chainsaw can reach them. There is a 90% chance you will get a survivor here without them escaping, except for one trick that they can do which I should also address a bit since it outplays a majority of these hits. And that is the crouch tech. If you don't know what it is, the crouch tech is a tactic where a survivor can crouch to decrease their hitbox from getting hit by a chainsaw sprint. This not only affects Billy, but even other killers who share similar power hit types. But there is a way to outplay the crouch tech as Billy. In order to hit folks who crouch tech you, make sure you aim your chainsaw directly directly on the survivor. Do not try to aim a little to the left or right of them, not even their shoulders too, otherwise it will cause the survivor to not be hit by your chainsaw at all. It's easier to prevent a crouch tech when you're in line of sight of the survivor, but difficult if you attempt to curve them. The reason to this is because most of the times when you do a billy curve, you never know if your chainsaw is going to hit them directly or close, and no line of sight gives these guys an easy opportunity to crouch before you begin. But if you see them directly, you'll know how to react and where to aim before before you begin the chainsaw sprint. As long as your chainsaw sprint ends directly on the survivor and not slightly off, the crouch tech should not be a problem for you. That being said, this is the end of the billy guide. If you guys have any questions or comments on this, feel free to comment below and I can be sure to answer it as soon as possible. And as a reminder, I do stream on Twitch and all of my content including this video comes from my Twitch streams. Be sure to follow my Twitch channel by going to the link on the screen and on the description below. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one.